the options feel almost endless. There's even a glute slider. And yes, I gave my rook one hell of an ass. See, that's what I'm talking about. Before I even get to this, it's the dishonesty. I'm pretty sure this is from IGN's hands-on preview, right? It's the dishonesty. How are you, how are you gonna show that footage and then just lie to me while you're showing me the lie? You put your, you put the lie on screen. Like, I feel like you just spit in my face. So how am I supposed to believe you when you say, I know the game looks really bad, but I played it and it's so good. And then you turn around and, and, and say this, like, well, that, that's why we don't believe you. That's why we don't believe you. But Luke Stevens has played seven hours of Dragon Age The Veil Guard. I want to see what he has to say about it. Dragon Age The Veil Guard. This is a game I have been keeping a very close eye on, as have many other people, because mm -hmm. it represents an extremely high stakes release for one of the industry's most prolific developers, 100%. BioWare. Dragon Age, of it's course, a big is deal. the franchise which last had a release in 2014 with Dragon Age. Damn, it's been 10 years. It was, it really was 2014. God, time just gets away from you. Inquisition. That year, it actually won Game of the Year at the very first mm -hmm. Game Awards that Jeff Keighley threw. But since kind of kind of crazy, it won Game of the Year. Looking back on it now, because like Dragon Age Inquisition, I mean, I loved it. I put like a hundred hours into it, but you know, like there wasn't another, there wasn't a better game that year, like. What came out in 2014? Since then, Dragon Age has been on ice, while Bioware went off and made Mass Effect Andromeda and mm -hmm. Anthem. And That's another reason why people don't trust uh, this game and the marketing around this game. You know, uh, it's not like they're coming off of Inquisition going straight into Veilguard. I think that, you know, their track record you know, on the last two releases with Andromeda and uh, Anthem has got people, al they already have their guard up. And we all know how those right games ended up at the end of the day. And it left a lot of people really worried whether or not Bioware was capable of putting yeah. out really compelling and interesting RPGs mm -hmm. with good role play and narrative consequence and fun adventure. Confidence was shaken to say the very, yeah. very least. And that's 100%. led a lot of people to look at Dragon Age the Veil Guard skeptically, withholding mm -hmm. judgment and excitement until they are shown a reason to be excited. And in this Again, another reason why these previews were so important and the marketing around these previews mattered so much because a lot of people, including me, first time I saw Dragon Age the Veil Guard, they already rubbed me the wrong way by changing the name from Dreadwolf to Veil Guard. I thought that was terrible. I thought it was a terrible decision. Uh, and then you also heard about, you know, the game was going to go multiplayer live service and then they tried to turn it around. So, I mean, I was worried about Veilguard before I even saw it. You know what I mean? Nervous about the game before I even saw it. Skeptical about the game before I even saw it. And then they they put out the previews that just were not good. Like, almost universally panned. This uh, UI looks awful. Oh, it's terrible. It, it looks like a mobile game. 100% looks like a mobile game. Awful UI. In this video, I'm going to be explaining to you my thoughts on the game after playing it for seven hours at a preview event in early September. I have a lot of strong thoughts and we're gonna go through all of it. And I will say that they have given us pretty strict guidelines to avoid spoilers, but they have allowed us to show a lot of the games. Okay. So I will be doing that and adhering to very strict guidelines. So if there's some footage you think I'm describing that you're like, oh, why don't you just show me? If I'm not showing it, it's probably because they asked me not to. Yeah, that's fair. So you know. But if you're looking for the spark notes of my impressions and opinions of Dragon Age the Veil Guard after playing okay, it, here we for go. basically an entire day, I will tell, tell you me. that I am thoroughly impressed. What I played was incredibly polished, graphically stunning, fairly narratively complex, and above all, entertaining. Just a few weeks ago, I made a video <laughs> huh? So called a skeptical look at Dragon Age the Veil Guard, where I outlined many of my concerns and frustrations, like the first trailer that they dropped, uh -huh. such as the troubled 
recent releases that Bioware has had EA's oh, track God. record with things. I went through it all, and I have not been that gentle towards Anthem or right. Andromeda or Bioware or EA in, in general. And right. and despite well, they haven't that, deserved it. They to still be fair. were willing to let me try the game because they were so confident in what they had here. And after, I mean, yeah, I respect that. And that is also another thing that I've heard is that Bioware's extremely confident in this release. Not sure why, haven't seen anything that I feel like justifies that, but I guess Luke did. After playing it, I see why they are so confident. I don't think Tell me about will it, Luke. fall in love with this, but Tell I do me, think Luke. Dragon Age fans and people who like fantastical adventure role-play games, they are in for a real treat if the entire game is like what I played. And in this video, I'm gonna break down Bro, holy shit. If the whole rest of his video is like this, this is going to be 38 minutes of me eating shit. Have you guys read the comments over on Rex Sterling TV on my Dragon Age videos? Oh, it's awful. They have been ripping me to shreds in those videos. Huh, can you imagine? I got to post a video now saying I was wrong? Oh, God. As I said, we played about seven hours of the game over the course of a single day. We were brought to a big campus that EA operates within in mm -hmm. San Francisco, California. They had taken a large open wrong, room. Never. Yeah, you're events right. Like these and converted never wrong. It into a sort of Dragon Age playroom with tons of computers set up. The version of the okay. game we played was on PC. Okay. I'm not How exactly did it run? sure what the build was, but I believe it was running on a 4080 and everything was cranked. So what you're seeing okay. most likely represents a very, very beautiful and maxed out version of the game. They had five missions for- We're probably gonna play it on the PS5 Pro. Uh, well, I got ahead of myself there. We're probably gonna play it on PS5. Then when the Pro releases, assuming I'm able to get my hands on it day one, switch over to the PlayStation 5 Pro so I can also talk about any differences that we see in performance or anything like that, uh, I will probably play it that way instead of PC. Not 100% sure, but that's what I'm leaning towards. For us, I think it'd just be way more interesting to see, like in real time, switching to switching from a game like this uh, on PS5 to PS5 Pro on day of release. I just think I get some content out of that, to be honest with you to play through three of which we were allowed to record and the other two we were of course allowed to play and take notes on though they ask that we not share like look at this like and the other like just look at everything it's just it's it's just a mess on screen just it's just a mess two we were of course allowed to play and take notes on though they ask that we not share too much about them since they involve heavy spoilers to be fair though in the settings i'm assuming you can probably turn like the health bars off you could probably turn the status effect notifications like that off as long as you can make some changes to this ui and turn some of the stuff off it would make a big difference and starting at about 10, 10.30 a.m., they just let us go. And if we wanted to play straight through lunch, we could do that. If we mm. wanted to play into the evening, we could do that, so long as we adhered to the strict stop time of 6 p.m. And that's okay. pretty much what I did. I played a lot. I even replayed missions I had already done, making different choices to oh, see good, good, how it good. would change the outcome in the next mission that that's what i'm interested it. in is and it meaningful it allowed me to really poke and prod and see how differently you could handle certain conversations or certain narrative beats or choices that seemingly have differing consequences and it's uh, once again a perfect example of why for these types of games when you're trying to prove that you have something giving people time to actually mm -hmm. test it is crucial because I found some interesting stuff that I'll talk about in just a few minutes. Spoiler alert, your choices like really matter. <laughs> like a lot. The first thing we- <sighs> Don't give me hope. I I'm genuinely shocked by this video. 
we got to do is go through the prologue. This was roughly an hour and a half and included some of the footage that's already been released publicly. This time though, we could go through the entire character creator ourselves, design our appearance, select our class, faction, play style, lineage, everything. Perhaps one of the most interesting bits about this was selecting your backstory. This actually does have a pretty significant impact on dialogue with characters That's and good. NPCs while you're going through the rest of the game, especially faction choice influences Rook's backstory and conversation. So I, I wonder if we get to play through our backstory any kind of like you got to do with uh, Origins. That would be cool. Actually, in later missions, later in Act One, you see what we were allowed to play was basically the prologue, a select few missions in the middle of Act One, and then a big moment in the middle of Act One and then the finale of act one or at least okay. half of it basically they ended on a cliffhanger just to keep us hooked but mm. i have a pretty good idea of how act one ends that being said there is a lot of game i do too and i i'm just so worried it's going to end with them killing Varric here and i was pretty impressed at how varied it felt while playing through it just a selection of act one seemed like there were many many differing levels and art styles and quest lines in terms of tone some of them were very light-hearted and mm -hmm. just sort of i don't know what else to call it other than pop culture fantasy but then mm -hmm. other segments of the game were extremely dark and kind of disturbing it was ex really i was uh, i was kind of skeptical about how dark the game would get considering the new art style I didn't feel like it. I, I, I didn't feel like this art style lends itself to like dark and gritty, you know, or really dark stories, things like that. So I, I got the feeling that they might not really like go there. They might not really explore that, but extremely varied which is something i was hoping for in case you don't recall the trailer that they dropped in early june of this year was not received super great most people felt that it was tonally just yeah. off it didn't feel like dragon age it felt like your standard appealing to modern audiences type game where they're mm -hmm. trying desperately to be witty and funny with characters that don't take things mm -hmm. seriously yeah it it, it it looked like uh it looked like BioWare was really inspired by Concord when they were designing these characters. Like this trailer was fucking terrible. So bad. This trailer was awful. It just was tonally off and it rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. And I think set strange expectations where people were worried this was gonna be yet another one of those games yeah but something interesting happened when i was at the event and maybe like i shouldn't say this but i think it's interesting so i'm gonna say it anyways and that is that i spoke to a number of people that i'll keep it vague are involved in dragon age the veil guard to one mm -hmm. degree or another whether they're involved with the marketing or the development what have you and one thing i heard from pretty much everybody that i spoke to was that they didn't like that trailer either they didn't want that trailer to go up and be the first look at Dragon Age the Veil Guard. It seems as though internally... Okay, so that rumor is true. Huh. The people actually making the game felt as though that was not representative of what the game was. It was potentially, I mean, my inference was that it was somebody higher up within EA or EA's marketing team that made that choice to frame the trailer in that way and try to sell the game in that wow, that's crazy and that almost makes me wonder like does EA want to sabotage Bioware do they just like do are they looking for an excuse to shut down this studio that's crazy that style and the people working on the game weren't happy about it but their hands were kind of tied they that's didn't get great to, to that hear choice that's really good to then, hear they've been trying to dig themselves out of that hole but for me it was reassuring to hear that the team that made the game was not yeah. thrilled with that trailer either they hell yeah that it wasn't indicative of what's actually here and that's that's another thing like that's one thing that i've been dealing with with my own videos about this game it's like every time i have put out a video with my impressions on uh dragon age fail guard i've been negative on it and i've had all of these like like meat riding fanboys uh like come at me for uh you know l like i have just the most unrealistic 
opinion like like i have the most unreasonable take ever it's like dude even bioware hated the trailer like even the team that made this game apparently according to luke here are saying like yeah it was terrible so it's like thank you you know what i mean like the developers themselves share my opinion god that feels so good he played had some lighthearted moments sure and some of the characters and companions i found more likable than others but there were also segments that were same quite dark areas and towns that were taken over by the mm. blighted or where a dragon might have attacked i mean it's obviously like it's not a completely different art style obviously but dead bodies blood on the ground the 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 color palette feels a little bit different here it's darker it's more the colors more muted uh, except for like that red in the back uh you know that's an improvement that you know that looks better than i expected to be fair and wreaked havoc like it was not all glitz and glamour and lighthearted silliness Ugh. there was some intense nasty stuff here as well and i i think that this is much more indicative of what the whole game will be not just that like kitschy campy trailer that we got in early June right and for me that's really really encouraging because I personally didn't like that trailer and I don't know of anybody else who did but nonetheless I guess just make of that what you will now one of the other things that was sort of the elephant in the room for a lot of us that were playing was how linear the game was going to end up being yeah what we saw of course in the previous gameplay demo was the prologue section the very first 45 minutes roughly mm -hmm. of the game and that was very very linear as you would expect most games have very linear openings to show you the True. ropes and explain how things True. work and as a result it, it can often lead to situations where people feel underwhelmed if that's their first impression what hurt me in, in that department was when IGM was doing their hands-on preview and they uh they talked about how big and large the sections of the world were that you could explore and literally while they were saying that and talking about that they were showing this area that just looked fucking tiny and claustrophobic and like very like narrow so that that really didn't help I, I got the feeling that it was very linear i got the feeling that it wasn't very large at all i got that same feeling when i saw gameplay of avowed you know which i'm still hoping that avowed comes out good however what I will say is that the sections that we got to play later on in the game were much, much more varied. Okay. Though, I, I think I need to explain a little bit more about how the game is laid out. Now, the way I would describe the level design in Dragon Age The Veilguard, at least the stuff that I tried, is roughly similar to like God of War 2018, where quest lines or the main story will take you to a certain okay. spot and you'll go through a largely linear path while completing that quest and going through that area you can return to that area there's other secrets to be found and goodies to be found and it's not i mean i guess that's kind of what i pictured but i just never really thought of god of war because that game was so good so that's like obviously not what i would think of when i was looking at the the previous footage of veil guard uh but this is good to hear side quests there and stuff like that but it's not just totally open world at the end of the day. Like it, it's more mm -hmm. linear open as opposed to just wide open. If that makes sense, it's hard to explain, it does. but fun. So I, I, I always called it open zone, something like you would see in borderlands, something like you would see in the outer worlds, things like that. I, I don't have a problem with that with dragon age. I always prefer open world, but at the same time, I, I'm not bothered by it being like an open zone where you fast travel from one zone to another. If they're like good, like if the immersion is there and the gameplay is there and the areas that you do get to explore are rewarding to explore, then I don't care. Fundamentally, what they're trying to do here is to give you more handcrafted areas that have more intentionality behind them rather than just a big open world that was mostly procedurally generated and that you can run around and find randomly placed stuff that spawns about because really at the end of the day what they wanted to do was to give you levels that were interesting that were memorable 
and to be able to craft encounters within those levels that are impacted by your choices and your decisions and your build. And honestly, okay. this is just kind of hard to explain. It's something when you play it, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I see what you're doing. And it's really not that big of a deal. I've heard some okay. people complain that they haven't That's gone good. full open world or anything. But in this case, having played the game, I actually think this works better given what they're trying to do here than if mm -hmm. they just went inquisition all over again and just went for quantity instead of quality but don't get it twisted this yeah, game I is agree not with that. small at all uh it seems massive by all accounts i've tried to get a clear answer out of them as to how big it actually is and nobody was willing to just outright say we expect it to take you 80 hours or 150 hours or 40 hours mm. nobody was willing to just say how big it was all they probably smart on their part to be honest with you probably smart they would tell me was that it was three acts and each of the acts are pretty large and what we played were very small selections of act one which would just be a third and it took us like seven hours six hours ish to get through those select like missions so if you extrapolate and you go okay well maybe it's like 15 20 hours per act maybe you get to like 60 uh, 70 hours perhaps but uh, yeah like mm. Yeah, so uh, that's if every act is the same size. A lot of times with these games, that first act is like much larger than uh, act two or three, particularly three tends to be a lot smaller. Now, who, who knows? I mean, who knows? But if act one is at the bare minimum, like eight to 10 hours long, then yeah, you're probably looking at a game that's somewhere between 25 and 50 hours. And I think that's probably okay. I think if it's like in the, I think if it's in the twenties, like if it's under 30 hours or maybe even under 40, then it needs to be really, really high quality, um, and have a lot of replayability to it. Again, all that's just speculation. And to be clear, I'm good with whatever they're doing. They or I think that, I think that's what the expectation would be. Keep the pacing up pretty good while we were playing. Granted, we were playing selected little chunks of the game, but if they can keep this rhythm and pace up throughout 40, 50, 60 hours, I will be a very, very happy camper, especially when you factor Damn. this in. The game is listed on Steam for sale for only 60 bucks. This isn't one of those mm -hmm. like $70 quadruple A games. Like they're releasing it for 60 bucks, which for EA to do is insane. That's why I originally assumed that they had no faith in the game to succeed, that they were only charging 60. Like, you know, them being consumer friendly with the pricing, it's EA. At that, be honest with you, never crossed my mind. It's already Steam Deck verified. I think it was a full two months ahead of launch that they first announced it was Steam Deck verified, which is insane as well. And they yeah, also clarified that. that it's not going to require the EA launcher to play, which is also a very nice win. If you buy it on Steam, you can just hit play and play it. <laughs> like, it's funny that that is like a W, but that was not a given for a lot of other what? EA games for a very long time. And now they're lifting that requirement, which is in my opinion, a very good thing to see. Now in some of So the, the world is crafted well, decisions matter, the gameplay is fun, and they're being consumer friendly with the price and the launcher. What, what am what, what what am I gonna do for the thumbnail of, of this react? Just just put clown makeup on. What the fuck? This isn't. I I can't believe this is the same game that we're talking about. Like what? Huh? Oh. Of the other missions that we got to play, we reset with a new playable character because they loaded us to a separate area of the game later on. So it didn't carry over our creep. How much did they pay you, Luke? Just, just tell me. Just give me the number, man. How much money did they give you to say this, bro? Created character. That's why you'll be seeing somebody else instead of the character that I chose. As I said at the top, I also replayed certain areas multiple times, which allowed me to test out different builds, different archetypes and classes, 
and so you'll also see different characters in those instances. We got the chance to see a lot of dialogue play out between the party members. There was even the chance to mm -hmm. have a little bit of romantic flirting with different characters. There was even mm -hmm. the chance to talk with characters like Harding and even flirt it up a little bit if you are somebody that likes to play these games and check out the romance options and stuff. You mean be a whore? Yes. Uh, extremely excited for this part of the game seems like there's a lot here and a lot of depth if you're wondering why harding is all uh bruised up yeah every time i see a picture of harding she looks like somebody beat the dog shit out of her in this shot it's actually because in the first mission of the game i made a choice to basically have her help me and mm -hmm. it put her into harm's way she oh. got injured as a result in a cutscene that followed that oh. and as a result for the rest of like the first chunk of act one mm -hmm. she was all bruised up and messed up even with these like scars and things oh, and, wow. and the wounds and cuts did that change over over time the first mission i did after the prologue she was extremely does it change over time and bruised up bruises everywhere and then this sequence is a little bit later maybe like a quarter of the way through act one uh, based on what I was told and she's actually recovering better she's starting to heal up but she's still obviously injured and it's once again like a cool visual in-game representation of one of your choices and she attention to detail <sighs> never thought I'd say that about Veil Guard, but you love to see it She'll even have dialogue that reflects it. People asking her if she's doing okay, she looks pretty rough and things like that. Mm. Whereas if I chose a different way, a different character would be in this spot and would have the damage done to them as well. I love this kind of thing. And That's there's awesome. many, many examples of that in Dragon Age, the Veil Guard that I saw, some that I can talk about like this and many others that I can't. And it gets me very excited to see how this would play out when you're playing the full game, making tons of choices that affect not just one of these characters, but all of your computer. Where are the uh, waifus? Uh, I haven't seen any, which is another reason why I was looking at this game like, why are all the characters you keep showing off so fucking ugly? Like, why? Like, especially the Kanari. What the fuck did you do to the, like, to the Kanari? Now, I don't want to sit here and, and be super negative. This is, you know, this is about Luke and, and his opinion. And, you know, he's saying these great things about the game. I like what I'm hearing. So I don't want to, you know, sit here and really shit on it. But, again, just the marketing around the game has been so fucking bad, man. Companions. Now, I did try a variety of classes and character builds while I was playing. I also tried different combinations and mixtures of companions okay. to see how they would mix and match Tell together. me about it. And I know there's been a lot of, like, skepticism or cynicism, whatever it is, towards the choice mm -hmm. to make it so you can't tactically control companions. But I oh, yeah, that's because that's, uh, again, for a lot of us, it's a core... Uh, mechanic or feature of Dragon Age games like we I mean it's an RPG role playing we we love being able to control the party members switch to the party members it gives you a break you know like if you've only been playing as the rogue that you selected or whatever class you chose at the beginning of the game and you you get tired of it you want to play as a mage for a little while and do some fun thing you could switch to your party member that's a mage that's super fun also uh, being able to play with the AI of your party members and set up cool combos and set up for them to heal you under certain circumstances, use certain attacks in tandem with others and 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 and, and all these other things and control how they manage like resources. Like I I just love that shit. I think a lot of Dragon Age fans love that about Dragon Age. And I think getting rid of that feature was a huge mistake to me because yeah, like okay, you're doing like some God of War style combat where you've got some assistance from a party member uh you know that's very minimal uh, what i mean by that it's like you you press l1 and then tap square and it triggers them to use an attack that's cool and everything uh but i doubt you do it better than god of war already does it when 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 it came to being able to like literally change the ai of your party and control them fully that was something that Dragon Age did extremely well. I can't really think of other games that did it as well. I'm sure there's some out there, but that was a very Dragon Age thing to have in your game and to take it out <coughs> and just to have 
you know, gameplay mechanics that other franchises are already doing better and doing really well. It's just, I didn't understand that decision and I, it just made me concerned about whether or not the people making this game understood what made Dragon Age so great. I will say after playing the game myself, I don't blame them for making that choice whatsoever. Never mind. I thought it was great from the moment I saw it. Combat is so frenetic, so crazy, hectic, especially when you're dealing with boss fights or fights with many enemies on screen at a time. Things can get really, really crazy really quickly. And being able to just quickly use like uh, shortcuts to activate abilities for your party members and then being able to swap those out for different abilities or different party members that can do other things faster mm -hmm. or that complement this skill of yours better. It, it's really, really fluid. And I was impressed at just how quickly I was able to get used to it. If I had to compare it to something, I mm -hmm. would say that it plays similarly to like God of War 2018 mixed with Assassin's Creed Odyssey with the quick ability Never wheel. Never played it's Odyssey. It's an interesting amalgamation, but it does also make sense when you consider when this game was being created and built out. And it was pretty cool to see that only halfway through Act 1, presumably only maybe 10, maybe, hours into the game, people's playstyles were already varied that much just based on... That's really, that's, that's really good. That's one thing that doesn't completely shock me just because I thought when they showed the uh the uh the skill tree for the game or or however it works uh but i i saw the skill tree and it looked really really detailed so i kind of got the feeling that if the upgrades are meaningful in any way then you probably would have like a variety of different play styles but it's good to hear him say it fermentation Imagine what this is going to be like when people actually get their hands on it and start looking for all the super special unique items that can break builds this way or that way. It's going to be crazy. Speaking of crazy, the game is graphically stunning and I don't need to tell you that. I know some people don't like the uh, subsurface scattering that they use mm -hmm. for some uh, character faces <clears throat> and stuff. I personally think the game looks ridiculously good and i am thoroughly impressed every time i see like the hair sim or just the way that they're able to render hair and hair physics coming off of dragon age inquisition where one of the most famous and common complaints about that mm -hmm. game was how bad the hair sim was and how bad hair looked in that game to see yeah. them come here and pull a total 180 where the hair is ridiculously impressive is just awesome to see i was glad to see it too but i was also it made it even more saddening that they finally gave us really, really good hair in this game that was looking like it was just about to come out and be total garbage. I was like, oh, of course. Of course they fixed the hair in the game that's going to flop. But maybe. Um, but I, I will say, um, you know, obviously we're watching it on YouTube. I don't have the game in front of me. I'm not seeing it in, in, in natively. I'm not seeing native resolution and all this other stuff. There's compression and all these other things. I mean, I thought it looked like a decent PS4 game. It did not look, it did, it did not look like, if you would have told me that this was made in like 2014, the same time as Inquisition, I probably would have believed you. So it's like some shit that you could play on your PS4 Pro. So, uh, no, nah, I, 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 can't say that I've seen anything with the graphics of this game that I think looks up to today's standards, in my opinion. I think maybe this looks good for Bioware. I don't think this looks good for the industry. I mean, it, it really is cool, and it's a huge improvement over pretty much any other open world adventure game. Look how stiff their faces look. I mean, this is a fucking RPG. Look how stiff their faces look when they're talking. It is cool, and it's a huge improvement over. This shit looks terrible for pretty much any other open world adventure game I can think of in recent lip sync looks awful too. It's a memory. They really cranked the dials when it came to uh, the hair fidelity and then the fidelity of skin, subsurface scattering, everything they're doing here is crazy. And this was one of the points. Look at that. And then the look at her face. Watch fidelity of skin, subsurface scattering, everything. Look at that. They're doing here is crazy. Stiff, stiff, dead eyes. Almost no expression conveyed there in the face at all. And this was one of the points of concern for a lot of us, which was that this is running on the same engine as Mass Effect Andromeda, as Anthem. This is an engine that has had lots of problems with games of this type, 
at least in years mm-hmm. past. Mm-hmm. However, it really seems like whatever issues they had with Andromeda or with Anthem, they fixed. But what I know is that what I played was graphically really impressive and polished out the ever living ass. I've participated mm. in okay. a number of preview events for games, including ones that were roughly two. Why are their heads so big? I mean, I, I know it's like a stylistic choice, but I feel like characters in this game, like their heads are distractingly large. Months before launch. And in almost all of them, the games run quite rough. There are bugs, there might be frame dips, this or that, but it's understood that this is an in-progress build. It's Mm -hmm. in development. What we're playing is probably even a few months older than the actual event because they had to prepare it. Mm -hmm. And so you usually can't take- Everyone looks short. It's because their head is so fucking big. That's why, like, like, uh, hold on, there's- there was a whole thing on on this. Um, Took a Redditor two weeks to fix the veil guard. Devs didn't realize after eight years and a hundred million dollars, the head sizes are too big. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. He's 100% right. Wait, wow. Like, look how fucking stupid that looks. Oh, I, I... Like, that's natural. Like, it... that's what the fuck. It didn't look stupid until I saw it not yeah. look stupid. Yeah, exactly. Now that I've seen those big ass heads, it's, it stands out like a, it sticks out like a sore thumb every time I see it now. Take away a whole lot from the performance of demos and previews like this at events. However, that's usually because the game runs way worse at the events than they will at launch. This game already runs ridiculously well. Granted, we were that's playing on a high crazy. PC. But Actually, when they say that they have optimized the really game and they have focused on polish and this is not going to be one of those Andromeda situations, I believe them because I could not tell you the last time I was at a preview event for any game that was two months out from launch at the time that I played it and it ran this well. I had. I feel you, Asmund Gold. Yeah, we know you'd be feeling, hey, you shut the hell up. You watch your fucking mouth maybe one or two dips below 60 frames in my entire seven hours with the game and even then it was for like maybe a quarter of a second before it came back and was running back at 60. it was maybe dropping like three four frames when i went into like a new level i mean i'm gonna keep it real with the way that this game looks um because this this honestly looks like a a high-end mobile game to me uh i've I feel like this should be running at 120. <laughs> this should be running at 90 to 120 frames, bare fucking minimum, even at max settings. Uh, I just, maybe I'm going to have to see the game for myself in front of me to understand, but uh, I just I just don't see anything about this game that graphically looks that interesting or special to me. And the door's open and I walk through like very, very inconsequential. I am thoroughly impressed here, and I hope the whole game is this polished and it's not just act one, but good God almighty, I will I will give them this. It is very impressive the work they've done to get this running well. I already thought that the Steam Deck verification two That's months good. ahead of time That's was good, a good though. sign, but now seeing that it runs this well across the board, like I, I really think they are trying to prove a point that this is not going to be an Andromeda situation again. But speaking of Andromeda, one of that's the other good. frustrations was people- That's still that's still good. That's still good to hear. Felt that the writing was not that great in yeah. that game. Okay. So people have been skeptical of the writing in writing. this game. Writing, this is, this is what I care about. whether it holds up or is gonna be able to hold a candle to what they did in previous Dragon Age games. And what I will say is that while I'm not overly familiar with the lore of Dragon Age or anything like that, I found myself compelled by the stories that they were telling in these isolated missions. I was okay. compelled by some of the choices you had it's to good. make, some of which are quite consequential, which we'll talk about in just a second. But all told, I was captivated. I thought the performances of pretty much the entire cast were compelling. And other than one or maybe two characters, I don't think that there's a single bad egg in this basket. The one character I didn't really- Wow. This man's telling me everything I've been wanting to hear about Veilguard. This is crazy. Really connect with was this companion, Ballara. Um, you find her like super early in the game and talk with her. She just comes off as like 
very I'm so quirky like oh my god I'm so quirky you know it's it's that kind of energy that's just like desperate for attention that I just I don't connect with. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm too old and I just don't have whatever it takes to put <laughs> up with it. <laughs> and so what Fair I enough. took away from her is like, okay, she's like kind of annoying, a little much for me. It's okay. Sure if there's enough party members, it's fine. If you don't like one or two of them, it's not a big funny. deal. Uh, but for me, I found myself actively not taking her to do stuff because I just, just kind of annoying to me. But that's the nice thing about having a lot of companions is that you can choose to not take some that you don't connect with. Yeah, that's, and that's fine. that's okay. Yeah. I don't really, I'm going to offend some people here. I don't really like Will in Baldur's Gate 3. I find him just kind of dry. I don't know who that is. And uninteresting. I know, I know people are going to be upset at me, but I just choose not to play with him when I go through Baldur's Gate 3 runs. Like I just, I'll take somebody else, you know, I'll take some Shadowheart over here. Maybe I'll take some Gale, mm -hmm. you know, have a little bit of this, have a little bit of that. That's the great thing about games with lots of companions is that if you don't connect with somebody, you can choose somebody else. Okay. That's so good. it's yeah. not like Ballara being kind of annoying to me ruins the game. Just yeah, to be clear, I agree. Clear, because That's I know fine. some people are going to be like, oh God, he doesn't like this companion. Therefore the game's bad. No. The, the, the only one I've, I've met that I really, really didn't like was the mage Nev or whatever her name is. I'm not 100% sure. She's the mage that they showed in the, uh, the first trailers and stuff like that. I, I really didn't care for her character design uh, the voice acting, the performance, and the the line, I, like I just everything about that character, I just did not personally like at all. You know, maybe I'll feel differently when I play the game. It seems like I'm gonna feel differently when I maybe I'm gonna feel differently about a lot of things that I've thought about Dragon Age: The Veil Guard when I play it, which I want to be absolutely clear would be ideal because I'm gonna play Dragon Age: Veil Guard. Like, fuck me, dude. I, I am going to play this game on launch. So uh, it's in my best interest for it to be good because I'd really like to enjoy playing it. But if it was terrible, I'm going to get some great content out of it, too. So, I mean, you know, it just, just please don't be boring. That's all I ask. But yeah, that one character didn't really didn't care for her at all. That was the no, one that bothered me. Not at me. all. The fact that they have variety, that's the spice of life. I wonder how many like party members they have i think they've released the number i'm not sure but i think they've released the number i'm okay with that just because i didn't connect with her or find her interesting how many does party members does it need to have, have the same reaction like Having at least said all of that it is like hard to at least the six right the main story given the small selection of gameplay that we got to experience but what i will say is they do not shy away from big set pieces big encounters story beats or major moments of consequence with basically consequence from your decisions that okay. could have a major impact on thousands and thousands of people. You can straight up Good. ruin entire cities based on your choices. And I love it. I can't. I, I don't know what kind of playthrough we're going to have chat, but I might, I could definitely see myself ruining some cities that's pretty cool that's really good Describe everything he's saying of some of the most impactful choices that were here but to put it simply there are multiple times in the game from what i understand just within act one where you will be prompted to make choices that will have long lasting effects for the rest of the game where you choose to go this route basically and your run through of the game as a result will be fundamentally different from that's crazy i find that hard to believe i just did not i did not get that feeling or that impression from anything that was shown in any dragon age veil guard uh presentation so it's crazy to to to, to hear Luke saying this, you know, uh, because I just like, I, I would have heavily bet against it. Other people that chose the opposite choice. There are, I would say ruin every city just for the lulls. Jesus Christ. Bunch of fucking savages in my chat. Full evil playthrough is where it's at for fun. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, Dragon Age is important to me. It's special to me. I, I'm a big fan of the franchise. So, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to trivialize my playthrough just for content. I'm definitely going to play it exactly the way that I want to fucking play it. Um, but I can say that uh, the less I like the game, 
uh, the more you're going to see that evil come out of me for sure. There are multiple instances of this. The devs talked about it, how they really wanted to empower players to make choices that were consequential Good. to show them that those choices have an impact. Remember Hell yeah. Earlier that I basically played through my lunch break and wanted to test different outcomes by choosing different choices going through and having this dialogue choice versus this one and choosing to go that route versus this route. I, I tested some stuff that I was not allowed to record and I'm not allowed to spoil for you. Mm. But what I will say is that there were at least two or three instances where you can have a totally different outcome that is extremely impactful, not just to you as the player, but to your companions and to people you're... <sighs> He's got to be making this up, right? It's it's just like, how, how, how can Luke be talking about the game that I've been watching? How? This has got to be a troll. It's like everything that he's saying in this video was crafted to just make me look stupid and wrong. I'm turning comments off on this reaction. Fuck it. Your companions know to their quest lines. It, it can be potentially even like literally earth shaking based on your choices here. That's crazy. This. I mean, that's what I want. That's what I want in Dragon Age. I put out my last Dragon Age video. The thumbnail says, who is this game for? The more, the more Luke talks, it sounds like it's for me. Oh, and the internet does not forgive. I, I can come out now and you know what I should do? You know what I honestly should do? I should put out this reaction or do another reaction to this where I just like completely dick ride uh, Bioware and Dragon Age and not not unlist or private my previous reaction, but literally put out double reactions on everything that they do. I should have all these reactions where I'm like, the haters were wrong. This game is a 10 out of 10. And then also put out a bunch of reactions where I'm like, you know, Dragon Age, Dragon Slop, the fail guard. And, and literally just play both sides all the way to the bank. That's what I should do. Honestly, that's the play. Like, and, and not even acknowledge that I made a single video criticizing this game. Just put out like one where I'm just like, yes, I knew it was going to be great. And because that's all people want to hear is they just want to hear their own opinions echoed back at them in like an echo chamber. I should just make hate videos on this game and videos where I'm just like, this is the greatest game ever. Put them both out at the same time and not even acknowledge that. I just pretend I'm not even doing it and just turn ads up. That's what I should do, man. That's what I should do. And it is exactly what I want to see out of an RPG for me to be able to make choices mm -hmm. that have an impact. That's not just do it for the lols. Like yeah, a different splash screen the at the ending credits, but something that actually affects my gameplay, affects the levels that I'll be going through, the NPCs I'm interacting with. That's what I want to see, and they pulled it off here. And it really a YouTube makes me first for to sure. What yeah. the entire game is going. I'll to be the first person to ever do that for sure. Acts of those types of decisions, not just a couple quest lines like we had. Now, as for other variations in terms of gameplay between players, mm -hmm. there's the narrative side of things, and then there's the gameplay side of things. I've already alluded to the different classes and stuff that you're able to pick from. I was able, thankfully, to test out everything from rogue gameplay to. Uh, I, I will, I am leaning towards mage. Uh, in Origins, I wanted to play mage, but I hated damaging my own party members and I was on PlayStation 3, so I couldn't cut that off. So in Origins, I always played uh, rogue. And then in Dragon Age 2, they turned that off. So in Dragon Age 2, I always played mage. And then in Inquisition, we finally got the chance to play as Kunari. So I, my only run in that game was as a Kunari. Um, and it was just like dual wielding, heavy tanking, warrior class, big dick in it. And uh, loved it. Romanced Cassandra, if you're wondering. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, just, I, I thought it was great. Absolutely loved it. 
in Veilguard, I'm thinking about going back to Mage. I would just love to see how the spells look and how, how you know, because like back in the day, like the spells looked good, but they didn't look that great. Uh, but I, I would just love to see modern Dragon Age, how good the spells can look. Uh, as you can see here, uh, magic based combat. And I was just my phone's about to fucking die. That's a shame, John. Don't let it happen. I'd hate to have to ban you of the magic build at first i know a lot of people were saying that they didn't really like it at if 10 minutes goes by and i don't see another chat from you sorry the event they were like yeah i'm just not connecting with it but it seemed as though the pattern was if people tried to play the first few missions with magic mm -hmm. they didn't really like it once they got to later missions mm. with the mage they were able to experiment with much higher level spell combos with different synergies between your companions and yourself and those people ended up really liking the combat now in this see that wouldn't be as much of a problem if you could control your companions and they were more involved of of course uh, I, I can understand why somebody playing mage early in the game would not be having a fun time because it seems like your party does minimal damage and their contributions to combat does, you know, it, it doesn't look very meaningful. You're a squishy ass mage. Uh, again, you know, just uh, something I don't like, something I don't like. Um, but I, I think that I think more than likely that's a remnant from the fact that this game was going to be a live service game where you weren't going to have a party. You were going to be playing online with other people, multiplayer and all this other bullshit. So, uh, you know, obviously they've they've pivoted and they've gone back to single player. I think that was the right call. I agree with it. I, c I commend them for doing that. But uh, I, I wonder if that's why they weren't able to integrate more meaningful con uh, party contributions in combat. This section of gameplay that you see here, I'm actually playing a later section of the game. It's actually like the last mission before the end of Act One, Looks is my cool. understanding. And uh, this is what they consider to be spoiler free footage, by the way. So if this is spoiler free, imagine what the spoiler footage looks good, though. I mean, I, I like it looks like but we're fighting through waves and waves of enemies as we work our way to an objective that we need to do something that I will be quiet about. But we are fighting and fighting and fighting and i am actually really impressed with how these different builds can work together if you choose certain companions they have synergies with your build or with each other's build mm -hmm. based on the types of damage that they put out so based That's on good. what weapons you have equipped which abilities you have equipped what you've upgraded and how you might want to take some companions versus others because they'll complement your skills better or worse it's really really smoothly implemented and I found myself actually having a really, really good time. Like I said, I played through this mission that you're seeing here, like two, maybe I think two and a half times. I got halfway through it before we had to stop for the hard stop. But I played this mission a few times and I was still having fun even after experimenting with different classes and builds. And I really think that this game's combat is just one of those systems that you're gonna have to just try to really get how fluid it comes off. I. We'll see. We will see. October 31st, right? I had a very good time. Granted, I do like Assassin's Creed Odyssey's combat. I really like God of War Ragnarok and God of War 2018's mm -hmm. combat systems. And this plays roughly similar to those with... I, I want to be clear. I liked Ragnarok's uh, combat system as well, God of War 2018. I also liked Outer Worlds. I said that earlier. Like their combat system and how you could uh, call on special moves from your allies. I'm not saying that this combat system is bad or that it cannot be done well. It's just not what I associate with Dragon Age. And it's not what I wanted from Dragon Age, to be honest with you. But if they do it well and they do it good, then when I'm playing it, I'm not gonna say, well, it's not what it's not exactly what I wanted. So I mean if if it's done well, I'm sure I'll enjoy it and I'm sure that my opinion will change on that. With a little bit more of a, a hectic tinge to it. The one thing I think that is important to note out is that in the missions we were playing, you do fight through waves and waves of the same class of enemies. Mm -hmm. They do throw in some bigger brutes. They'll throw in some different high aggression grunt type enemies. Then you might fight a big ogre or mm -hmm. there might be a boss fight at the end of it. It's pretty similar to what, again, you would have seen in other games yeah. that use similar 
combat styles to I don't think that there ever was a, a very large diversity in enemy types in in Dragon Age you know like you had like your you had like your spiders you had people that could like maybe be werewolves or something like that you had your different types of dark spawn sure but you know a lot of times when you would see something special like a dragon or something like that it was, you know, in very specific encounters. I, and I don't remember there being a ton of diversity in enemy types. I'm not saying that that shouldn't be improved or that I don't want it to be improved because I do. But I don't think Dragon Age has ever really had that, to be fair. And uh, I, I don't think it's going to, like, totally turn me against the game if it doesn't have it here. To this, whether that's AC Odyssey or God of War. You fight waves and waves. It's going to come off a little samey after a while, mm -hmm. but thankfully the gameplay loop and the combat is engaging enough that I never really found myself bothered by the lack of variety from mission to mission because going from one mission to the next will introduce more variety, but usually within individual missions, it's pretty samey. I but think again, that's this enough. Is just video games for you. It's just kind of how that works. So I think that's fine. This might not even really be an issue. It might just be something if we're looking to nitpick, that's where we could find it. But I figured I'd point it out nonetheless. Here's an instance where you can see those synergies, where you can see after I popped one ability from Harding on the right side of this wheel, mm -hmm. on the left side, you can see that he has a ability that specifically combos with the ability that Harding just used. Is that why it's highlighted? the way that it is because if so that's great thank you and that can also combo with ability oh it literally says excuse me man fucking drinking all of this carbonated uh it literally says it combos with you can see it kind of behind heroic strike here it says combos with and i don't fucking know what but uh that's great maybe it just says combos with but either way it, it lets you know and that's great good thank you these i have so that you can have pretty much ultimate abilities you're popping off if you do it in a select order and okay. way. And also to be clear, because I've seen some people bring this up, you do not have to open the wheel every time you use an ability. It's only when you want to open up and pause time, kind of taking a breather, figuring out what you want to do. You can okay. see in this gameplay that I'm actually using the quick activated abilities as I'm fighting through where I'm pressing right trigger to pull open left bumper. Okay. In the ability wheel. And then I'm select it's L1 for L. We speak different languages. I'm a PlayStation guy. So it's L1. Ding. Pressing right trigger to pull open the ability wheel. And then I'm selecting left up right or down on the d-pad or x a b to activate my abilities and so you don't have to pull the wheel up every single time you can that's good it doesn't look like a difficult system that's cool that's good that's cool i like that please select them and figure out how you want to use them i still think the ui is uh needs to be cleaned up i i think it's i don't like the way the the ui is organized i feel like it's a little it's a little off-putting it's a little bit too much but at the same time, uh, I feel like it is something that I could get used to and pop them fast. But okay, at the end of this, what are the takeaways? What's my my kind of final opinion? I went into this preview event expecting the game to be kind of eh. I expected mm -hmm. it to be a reinvention unnecessarily of a formula. People already connected. God damn it, Bioware. Like, I, I literally don't patch anything in the game until you fix the Canary forehead. You've got to do something. You've got to do something. Like, for the love of God, you've got to do something. Like, hold on. Like, brother. This is fucking Dragon Age 2. This is like 15 years ago. Like, man. Look at what they took away from us. To give us this dumbass, smooth head, mega mind looking freak. It's one of the most badass designs. Even the grunt over here looks bad as fuck. And they give us these dumbass looking designs for the Canari. They, they, you got, you gotta fucking, you gotta fix that, man. You gotta. That's just this. Look at this. That's terrible, bro. Did with. I figured it would come off as just a less impressive 
Witcher or or God yeah. of War clone or Baldur's mm-hmm. Gate, you know, adjacent RPG. But they've actually managed to strike their own tone, their own presentation. And I do think there is a pretty sizable market for something like this. People like RPGs. People like fantasy adventure games. Mm -hmm. And they like high production values, too. And this seems to do all of it pretty well. And they are taking active steps to try and remedy the mistakes of years past. They're releasing this game at a discount for what is considered to be AAA pricing. Mm. Nowadays, if they wanted to charge 70 bucks, they could do that and get away with it. Nobody would really bat an eye because it's a AAA like main entry game in a big franchise. He, he's right. Uh, you know, I, I, the $60 price tag, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious about why that's there. But in this case, grateful though. Case, they were just releasing it at 60 bucks on Steam because they want to show you that like, hey, yeah, we, we're trying to be pro-consumer. We're trying to give this to you at a, a fair price. Here you go. They're doing mm. other things like polishing the ever-living crap out of it to show that you can optimize a game and still release it and be profitable if the game is good. Hey, and it music seems to my the ears. game is, at its core, entertaining and good. And that's what I'm... And that, that's all that people want, man, like... I hope I feel this way when I play it. Looking for. I just want another game that I'm going to have fun with, mm-hmm. that I can be proud of supporting because it's priced fairly, it's optimized, it's polished. God, could you imagine if Dragon Age the Veil Guard goes from being this slop looking garbage that might come out and like just flop and be trash? being compared to things like Concord and imagine going from that to actually becoming a game of the year nominee. That would be insane. That would be insane. That'd be such a huge win for Bioware. Imagine if that kind of turnaround could happen, bro. I would be happy. I'd be so happy to see that happen if it's deserved. That's what we've all been begging for for yes. like a year or two out yes. of these big AAA releases that come out rushed, come out broken, mm-hmm. come out lazily thrown together and uninspired. And this seems to be a direct answer to those frustrations. And I'm here for it, frankly. I'm excited to say that I'm excited for Dragon Age the Veil Guard. And after playing this game, I feel as though this really could be something special. I'm wow. happy to say, I think Bioware might actually be back. And why? Bro. I want to believe. I want to believe, but uh, I'm going to I'm have to play this game all the way through before I'm willing to say something like that. While this game is not going to be for everybody, I'm sure there's going to be some people that don't like the way that they've set up combat or the way that they set up the levels or this or that. Mm -hmm. I think there are many, many people who are going to find this game to be something really special and are going to eat it up. And based on my preview, I think I just might be one of those people. I hope the rest of the game holds up to this level. I hope that they're actually able to follow through on this and deliver on the very, very good impression that this gameplay makes. And I know I'm going to be keeping a very close eye on it when it releases on Halloween of this year. But with all that said, thank you for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me. We'll continue to keep a close eye on Dragon Age The Veil Guard as we get closer to launch. You better believe I'm going to be watching it closely and closer than ever, especially now after I tried it and really, really enjoyed it. But at the end of the day, I think it's safe to be excited. I think it's safe to be intrigued by this. It really does seem as though they have worked their asses off to deliver something that they are really proud of. And after playing it myself, I can see why they are so confident and why they're so proud of it. It's not going to be for everybody, I'm sure, but uh, I I have a feeling it's going to be for me. And wow. That makes me excited. Lingering questions I have just to run through these real quick because I wrote them down. Wow. I mean, I, I couldn't be... <clears throat> I, I'll be honest with you. Now, uh, again, I've made videos where I've been extremely critical of this game, 100%. Uh, but what I what I will say is that I'm very, very happy to hear Luke saying these things because it does make me more excited for the game. And this is somebody whose opinion that I, I do, I kind of feel like I paused at a weird moment. It, it looks like he's gazing 
deeply maybe into the eyes of a lover or, you know, maybe he's remembering a painful loss, you know, he's sitting, uh, you know, on a park bench in front of a lake, staring over the water, thinking about what life could have been like if he didn't take that internship. What if he would have proposed instead of taking that job and left her behind? He'll never know. Anyway, um, yeah, yeah, I'm glad to hear Luke saying this. Down, and I was like, ooh, I should talk about this. As I said, I don't know how big the game is. I'd like to know that. I don't know if they'll announce that before the game launches. It might not even be that helpful, but it does seem it's big nonetheless. However, I... Uh, based on what he said about Act 1, I think you're going to, at the very minimum, you're going to get 20 hours out of this game, and I think that that's... You know, depending on the quality of those 20 hours, probably going to be okay. Also, depending on the replayability of it. But, you know, it's, it's not, it doesn't really super worry me. I wasn't able to get a clear answer as to exact length. As for whether or not Extreme Choice Variety exists also in later acts, I'm also not sure. A lot of these types of games start off really, really strong with that type of thing, and then they sort of drop off in mm -hmm. later acts. Yeah, well, ba ba even Baldur's Gate did that, but I mean, Baldur's Gate 3 was uh, absolutely amazing. You know, everybody loved it, so, it, you know, what does it really mean? Uh, but that's what I'm wondering. Like, imagine, imagine Bioware, like, imagine they had enough time to salvage that first act, and that's pretty much it, and it just falls off after that and becomes trash. Hopefully not, probably not, but imagine. Well, they try to tie up various strands, which is very normal. Even Baldur's Gate, to a certain extent, mm -hmm. had that problem. Yeah, there so, it is. If you even call it a problem. So I'd like to know that. I also want to know how viable extreme playthroughs are. Like, can you just play as somebody who is extremely evil? How does that look? How yeah. do your companions react to that? I'm curious as to that because we uh, didn't really get the chance to test enough how you could destroy mm. relationships as well as as build them up. And there's yeah, also been a I'd lot love of discussion to see that over too. the companions and the way that they've set them up here. Basically, companions are designed to have their own little lives and opinions and feelings. They'll they've been saying that a lot in these presentations, and I just I'm I'm skeptical of it because I I haven't. I don't think that I've ever personally played a game that really did that where your companions can have like their own romances and have their own like life going on outside of the missions that you take them on. I don't know if I've seen a game do that really, really well. I had a very limited experience with Baldur's Gate 3, so you know, don't don't come for me if 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 that's one of them. But uh I I've heard them talking about that with Veil Guard, but I, I've kind of been critical for obvious reasons that I've gone over multiple times. I wonder whether or not that's really fleshed out. They'll interact with other members of your troop, basically, and they'll even like begin romantic relationships with each other if you're mm -hmm. not engaging with them yourself, which is kind of interesting because when we did a Q&A after we played the game for a bit, somebody asked, hey, can I like sabotage other relationships? Ooh. Like say, I want to get with this person who's in the party, but this other companion wants to get with them as well. That's a good can I question. I sabotage that relationship. And they were very coy about it, but the devs said, well, there's no like sabotage relationship button, but right. they will hypothetically, let's just say, come to you for advice. And nobody's saying that you have to give them good advice. And if you give them bad advice and they make a mistake, that relationship probably doesn't work out, which is mm. just kind of cool. The idea that there's like romance options with companions. So the, the thing about that is that that's vague enough to leave it open to where it's possible that you have options and one of them is to like intentionally directly sabotage that relationship, which I hope there is. I think that's great. I think that should be in there. Love it. Love the idea of doing an evil playthrough. Uh, or at least being a fucking menace to uh, to your party. But it's that answer also leaves it open enough that it's simply a matter of, like, there's a right option for advice and a wrong option. And if you mess it up and choose the wrong option, like you're, like you're trying to be helpful and those are your only options is to try and be helpful. And if you choose the wrong option their relationship could fall through it could be it could go either way obviously i'm hoping that 
the options allow you to intentionally help or intentionally sabotage, but it could be a case where it's, it's simply like there's a right answer, there's a wrong answer, and you could mess it up by accident. I hope that's not how it's designed. Canyons. And then they'll even try to have romances between each other. And then you can sabotage those or interact with those. That's the kind of interaction with companions. This feels, I really hope they don't over promise and under deliver to make Same. a hand gesture, but uh, you, you Same. get what I mean. You know, there's interactivity with companion. I'm going to move on. <laughs> it's going to be hard. They've, they've promised a lot with this game. Like they really have, I don't want to say over promise, but they've promised a lot. And then when you look at the, like I said, you see the gameplay and presentations we've seen so far. It doesn't look like there's any way they can deliver on it. But, you know, Luke has given me hope here, which, you know, maybe maybe come November, I'll be pissed off about. We'll see. <laughs> and then lastly, I just want to know about console performance. We got to play the game on right. PC. I don't know how this will run or look on console because it seems like everything we've seen so far is on PC, which is fair because that's where it's going to look the best. But still, I'd like to see. Same. I, I, I want to see how it looks on PS5. Well on like a C Again, I'll, I'll probably play it on PS5, probably. So, yeah, I, I'm curious, too. Series S or how does it look on the PS5 Pro? Is it going to be uh, receiving some enhancement there? I know it that's what I want to know, yet, but maybe it does receive an enhancement. I'd like to know that stuff. And I'm sure we'll find out more about that as we get closer to launch. But I'm sure it will. It would just be it, it would just be a huge missed opportunity for them to not have some kind of pro patch, you know, and then, like I said, I'm going to try and get the pro day one if I can and then put Dragon Age on that and we can talk about differences and you know how it runs and things like that i think that would be huge to see how it how it performs differently on the pro with all that said guys i'm gonna call it there thank you for watching thank you for making my dreams a reality let me know what you think of dragon age that's a, gr that's a great video man um i uh i'm gonna i'm gonna put the link you know now that i've watched this i'll, I'll give you guys the link but i uh i thought that was awesome i think it's a great video mail guard after these previews have dropped because mine is not the only one going up today when you're seeing this and i'll see mm -hmm. you very soon thank you for watching i love you all i'll see you next time hugs and kisses Bye bye i come across like such an asshole uh, on stream all the time and uh and and then i i you know, I, I felt guilty for not letting the last seven seconds of his video play out. So if, the, if, if you want to know what a fucking softy I am, there you go. Uh, wow. You know, wow. What a, what a, what a video. Uh, what, what a, you know, what a surprise. Honestly, that's not what I expected from Luke. That's not what I expected from content creators getting their hands on Dragon Age the Veil Guard. Uh, again, Luke has been, you know, negative and pessimistic about the game, just like I have. I think there's a lot of good reasons for that, but I didn't expect him to have that take and to have that opinion walking away from a hands-on preview with the game. I think it says a lot about Bioware that they've let content creators that have been negative about the game get a hold of it. And I think it says a lot that they let them have so long with the game, seven hours with the game. That's impressive. You know, I mean... Look, I, I'm I'm not going to lie to you. There's still a lot of reasons why I think this game could disappoint me as a fan of Dragon Age when I get a hold of it. But after listening to everything that he said, I'm open. I always have been open to the possibility that the game could be good. I've never said, you know, that I want this game to be bad. None of the criticism that I've had towards Dragon Age the Velguard has been for clicks on YouTube or because I want the game to be bad and I'm not the kind of person that digs their heels in on an opinion and is unwilling to change their mind. If I play the game and I like the game, I will tell you that I think the game is good and that I like the game and why I like it. And if the game is bad, but I'm still able to enjoy it, I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that I think that this game is extremely flawed and this these are the flaws, but I still really enjoyed it and here's why. I want to like the Veil Guard. I want to enjoy this game. I have enjoyed the other three Dragon Age games, even though two had huge flaws. Three had some big flaws, but they were different. I still enjoyed them. 
and maybe this game will be the same thing you know maybe maybe there will be some flaws there maybe there will be some things that i really don't like but overall i like the game a lot and enjoy it a lot who knows uh, but I can tell you that when this game launches, I will be there. I have made too many videos on this game. I have been so critical, and uh, it's just like it's honestly been a roller coaster ride for me as a fan of Dragon Age leading up to the release of Veilguard. I have to play this game, period, and I will. And if my if 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 I'm wrong about you know the red flags that I'm seeing, I still feel like I have completely valid reasons for my skepticism and the criticism that I've seen in trailers and in art and everything else. But I also feel like there's reasons now to be hopeful. There's reasons to be excited, reasons to be hopeful. Like maybe this game will have some things I don't like and will, in spite of that, be great. It could happen. I hope it does. I hope it does happen. I want good things for Bioware. I want good things for Dragon Age and for, for gamers. I want us to have a good game. So I didn't think that Dragon Age The Veil Guard would be a good game. I didn't think that that would be one of the games that we talk about this year is, hey, that was a, that was something special. Maybe it will be, and uh, it, would, it would be great for me personally if it could end up being that way because I really want to like this game.